Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to the Elite Podcast Network, home of the number one independent wrestling coverage. Available on iTunes, Stitcher, Blog Talk Radio, and wherever you get your podcasts from. Follow us on Twitter at Elite Podcast Net and join the revolution now. Podcast Network. Uh, I'm, I've been kind of MIA, you know, working and shit. Uh, yeah. Crazy past week, and I'm pretty sure you guys already talked about PWG or whatnot. But today here on WH Radios, uh, the today's topic is what's next for the indie scene because there's a lot of folks in the independent scene right now that's uh, getting signed, going to the WWE or whatnot. And yeah. the question is, who's going to step up in the indie scene to be the next? Big star in the indies. Uh, you got a lot to talk about, though. But uh, if you want to get involved with the show, you can call us up at three four seven nine four five 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 six six, or you can tweet us at Russell Heads, or um, you can tweet me at WH Skits. Tweet Oscar at Sinister six thirty two, or you can tweet Tom at two tweet me. Um, that's with the T double O tweet me. So uh, get involved, people. Um, NXT, uh, two of the folks that we we're probably going to mention, uh, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa, were actually uh, part of NXT this week. Uh, basically, uh, they cut a little promo in the back with uh, William Regal and uh, Tyler Breeze. Basically, uh, they're going to be a part of the Dusty Rhodes uh, tag team tournament that's going on. Uh, those two will be tagging up. And they're going to be going against Bull Dempsey and Tyler Breeze uh, next week, I believe. So uh, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing Tommaso and uh, Gargano uh, get some shine in NXT. Yeah, I mean, um, seeing both Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa was very interesting. Um, um, you know, they're going to be obviously going to be part of the tag team tournament and everything. So. You know, that causes questions like, are they going to be part of NXT for a while? Are, are we going to see them in future takeovers? Is this a one-time thing? I mean, do they have a Samoa Joe type contract when he first signed? Like, there's some questions about it, you know. And I believe they could still work indies, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. No. And it's really interesting because they really seem to be kind of spotlighting Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa. You know, they had him do a backstage segment with William Regal. They had a WWE.com interview. And I, I would say minus Blue Pants because she's gotten a lot of spotlight. We really haven't seen, you know, some of the indie talent get noticed before officially getting signed because technically they're not signed. William Regal said they're still free agents. So it's very interesting to see that they're kind of getting a, a good amount of spotlight for not even technically being signed yet. Um, you, you know what that reminds me of? 
it it kind of reminds me of when Davy Richards and and um, Eddie Edwards went to TNA when they were still kind of free agents and they were just on TNA and then they officially signed. Kind of reminds me of that. Yeah, it's definitely very similar to that. Um, and you know, TNA has done kind of stuff like that in the past with some indie talent, like put them on TV for a little bit. But we really, you don't see that a lot from WWE. Usually. Uh, in, in most cases, they want to sign the guy and make them exclusively theirs. But from what we've seen the past couple of months, you know, with Samoa Joe, you know, debuting at uh, TakeOver a couple of months ago and still being uh, in Ring of Honor and going on the indie scene, uh, it's definitely a very interesting kind of scenario that's going on with NXT right now where there's a good group of guys that are getting spotlighted and put on NXT and they're not even officially signed yet. So, but definitely, it, I mean, I like it. Gargano and uh, Tommaso Ciampa definitely deserve it. I, I, I did cringe a little bit at William Regal's pronunciation of Yeah, Tomasa. it was Ciampa. Oh, my. <laughs> hey, like, all I have to say I, I, I is Ciampa played it well, though. I played it well. He was like, yeah, he was like, t- Tommaso, uh, it was like Tommaso Champia. And I was like, come <laughs> on, Regal. I was like, Regal, you go to PWG, you should know how to pronounce Tommaso Ciampa. I, I did what if they, what, 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 if, what if that's his name, though? What if they change his name to that? That would be hilarious. That would be hilarious, well, though. Yeah, maybe this is where we're going to see from now on, like... I mean, you know, it's kind of funny that WWE changing all these main rosters' names from Antonio Cesaro to Cesaro, uh, Big E Langston to to Big E. I mean, could we see, like, you bring all these big ending names. Like, what if they sign Trevor Lee, this example, Trevor Lee, and they bring him into this kind of type of, you know, start like, like with Gargano on them, and then when they bring him to the main roster, is his name just going to be Lee or Trevor you know, is that something that we we're going to see with, you know, like... I mean, when, I don't think so. I think he just didn't know how to fucking say his name, to be honest with you. I'm no, just no, no, talking no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, in general, the, the future of, you know, who, any talent signing him with the WWE. Like, you know, I'm saying if, if Gargano and them ever makes the main roster, will Johnny Gargano... I mean, obviously, they're not going to keep the name Johnny Gargano. They might even change it to their Gargano... I I thought it was Johnny made up his name. I mean, you know, we don't know how, who knows how the future is going to hold, but maybe this is where we're going to see from now on. You know, what if Biff? You know, if, you know, remember if Biff and Rick Schwann, if they're going, is this, did they sign some type of deal like this, or they're signed full time? We see, we just don't know. Yeah, speaking since since you brought those uh, folks up, um, there's a couple of other names that are. Uh, there's a lot of re- reports out there that these folks have uh, got signed to the WWE. Reports out there that Biff Music is on his way. And as we all know, Biff Music had one hell of a weekend. And um, for those that were at the PWG show, his last match, uh, usually when somebody kisses the ring after they're done, I mean, with a match, you know, it's kind of a sign. And plus, he also put a sign out there on Facebook with a message and Twitter. So... He's basically saying, you know, I don't know what's next for my career, but, uh, you know, I'll never forget Reseda, you know, California. So uh, the, these are the names that are reported to be going to the WWE. You got Biff Busick, you got Rich Swan, and there's reports Chuck Taylor. And I believe uh, Tom was also saying there's a couple other names. Yeah, I heard reports of Drew Gulak as well. Um, who else? Athena is reported to maybe sign with WWE. Um, who else? I saw a couple uh, I have, of names. I also got sources that Nikki Storm, female wrestler, also signed, too. So, uh, it's a possibility. You know, and, there's, there's going to be a lot of change going on. Yeah, and let's <laughs> not forget, uh, you know, the reports coming out from the Observer that uh, Kana from Japan is going to be coming into the WWE as well. So, they really seem to kind of be stacking up that NXT roster, which I, I, I think they, they have, have to. Yeah, because you have to believe that when Sami Zayn comes back, he is going straight to the main roster. You know, if he wasn't if he wasn't injured, I would say he'd be on the main roster right now. 
Um, so he's probably going to be up there. Finn Balor, as soon as he loses that title to whoever, um, he's probably going to be called up. Um, Samoa Joe, I could see getting called up uh, pretty pretty quickly as well because, you know, he has the experience and he doesn't need to be down there for so long. So I could see, you know, Vince wanting him on the main roster just to have, you know, uh, a big name in there and have another another guy who can cut promos and put on great matches. So you really need to stack up that NXT roster. And another thing that they really need to do is when – because NXT is a touring brand now. They need to have it. that. Also, one more name you forgot to mention, whose uh, possibility this person will be on the main roster by the end of the year, Tyler Breeze. So – they yeah, definitely got to stack up. Yeah, without a doubt. And you have to think because NXT is becoming a touring brand. So they're going to have to make people want to go. So they're going to have, you know, because with Sami Zayn and Hideo Tommy being out, that's two big names right out the window. You know, Kevin Owens is on the main roster full time now, so he's probably not going to be back. A lot of the a lot of the girls, like Sasha Banks, Charlotte and Becky Lynch, they're going to be on the main roster full time, so you really need to stack up on NXT. And we, we we talked about this before because of how quickly the turnover seems to be for um, independent guys going from NXT to the main roster. It's it's a pretty quick turnaround. You know, it could only take a couple months, like Kevin Owens, or it could take uh, a year. But that's still a pretty short amount of time. So you need to stack up as many people into NXT if you're going to make it its own separate brand. So I like it. And like I said, uh, another good thing that I do like is that, you know, the big thing is that for so long people were like, well, people in NXT aren't making that much money. I believe, like, before a lot of the big indie talents made, like, their names in uh, NXT, like, the regular NXT guys were making, like, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year, which that's not a lot of money. But once these big indie names started coming in, there there was reports that all like all the contracts are getting higher numbers just for being in NXT. You know, Kevin Owens was making a good amount of money. Finn Balor's probably making a lot of money, and you know they have their own merchandise, which a lot of NXT guys didn't have before. So, I'm it, glad that you mentioned merchandise because yeah. there is a lot of reports going out like Blue Pants is getting heat from the the Divas in NXT, you know, because, uh, you know, she's basically, you know, um, when she gets booked, basically, you know, she's she sells her own merchandise and doesn't have to, you know, give none, none of her, you know, uh, money that she makes to the, w, to the WWE. So, and, and I guess also she's uh, charging a little more uh, to get booked at, other places besides NXT, you know, because she's getting exposure from NXT. I wouldn't blame her. The girl's good. I mean, yeah. half of the chicks yeah. right now are not even that great on the uh, uh, roster with NXT. So yeah. it Brilliant is what it is. <laughs> even Marie and Dana Brooke are like nothing compared to. I don't even want to uh, shit on these girls. I don't. Even, I don't even want to shit on them right now because it's a waste of fucking breath to shit on the girls that yeah. even can't wrestle. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. There's something I want to comment with what Tom said about like, you know, about bringing these names. I mean, I, I mean, or, and, and yourself, Skip. Like, you, I heard the Nikki Storm. I did not. I mean, I heard Drew Gulak. I did not hear Athena. I never heard that anywhere that she signed. But even if, if it's true, you know, I mean, the indie scene's got to set, set it up because you, you got to think about it. Look at all those names that either they just signed or potentially didn't sign or whatever it is, like. A Samoa Joe type contract deal. I mean, what's the future holds for PWG? You, you, look at, just just say. Chopper's I think PWG gone. be fine. PWG be fine. How? They'll be fine. How? They'll be fine. How? Do you see who's How? all on their fucking roster? Who? Zack Saber Jr. Do I have to keep going? Okay. Do I have to keep going? Brian Cage. Maybe maybe Brian... non inter maybe non international talents. I just said Brian Cage. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, ACH, Cedric exactly. Alexander. All these we guys, are, all these guys are still on the roster. They're still on their roster. If you go to PWG's website, all these guys are still on their roster. If they're not on their roster, they would take them down. You got Joey Ryan, Candice LeRae, uh, 
let me go to this fucking website since you're going to. PW should be fine. Like, they will be fine. I don't know. I wouldn't <laughs> count ACH and uh, Cedric because they haven't been there since February. So, I don't know if I want to count them there. I'm going to call out every, everybody on, on the roster. PWG because, be fine. Because, Ricochet. You got Ricochet. Uh, Roddy Strong is still there. Um, the Young Bucks. Uh, who else? Uh, Andrew Everett. Uh, Chris Hero. Do I have to keep going? Or are you on the side? Trevor Lee. Timothy Thatcher. Matt Seidel. Do we keep going? Yeah. And keep going. Don't forget the Super Dragon. Yeah, don't forget I mean, the Super Dragon. Come on. Also. This is PWG we're talking about, bro. You act like they're like some. Some bullshit indie promotion that's gonna, you know, die. Like they're gonna bring in people. No, I'm not they saying it's gonna it's... die, but I mean, you lose a lot of, like, okay, example, that Gar- Gargano, not Gargano, I mean, Tommaso Ciampa and Biff Busick. You lose those two, that means you lost the fact. We went to the shows, right? You lose the fucking uh, exposure. I mean, not exposure. The crowd. It's called replace them. They it's called it. replace them. It's called replace them with somebody even better. That's what it is. You gotta so replace better find them. out somebody to replace those entrances because it's, it's not gonna be the same without those two. Because you know, we, we like I said, we both go to their shows and then we, you know, everybody. P W G will be fine, bro. Pure fine. Yeah, yeah. Right. let me. I'll, I'll, I'll say this: P W G and a lot of big indie names like A I W, Smash Wrestling, A W like that. They're gonna be fine for the simple reason that. There's so much talent on the indies that they, it's getting to be it's getting to be replaceable. And there's you still got Dan Barry of, and um, Bill Carr. You know, you still got a lot. Well, you got they're going to be out, out for there. a while. They're going to be out for Who? a while. No, they're uh, Bill Carr and Barry. Yeah, Bill well, Carr's back, bro. That, yeah, Bill Carr. They're coming back for Beyond Wrestling at the end of the month. But like I was saying, there's there's so much talent, and with PWG in particular, they can fly in. A lot of the UK guys, they and who knows, well, I don't know. Guys got, over this, guys got over this past weekend. Guys got over this past weekend. Like I, the Lucha I guys. Could, look, at, I doubt they'll freaking fly over all the indie. I mean, sorry, the UK guys. Like, like we just saw Bola. I doubt they could sh- fly them all in uh, in every show. Well, unless no, they start the, charging, unless they start charging, these prices go up. Then okay, then I can see it happening. Well, as of right now, I doubt that you could bring in like Marty Scroll or uh, Will Ospreay and Ant- and Mandrews every show. I doubt it. No, like, I, I, it. I doubt it, it bro. I mean, it, it, there's really there's really nothing even to talk about. They'll be fine. I mean, the yeah. the, the, the main but thing it, is who's going to step up once these guys get signed. Who's going to be the next big thing for those guys? Who's you know that's that that's the real question. The companies will all be fine. They know how to replace somebody. Like it's happened yeah. plenty of and times. He, and like I said, there's so right. much talent on in the Indies right now that we know of, but there's also a lot of really, really young guys that are just kind of getting some notice all over the United States and Canada. You know, we live here in the United States. I, I'm pretty sure, you know, Mac Grant could tell us all about, you know, a, a lot more of the young Canadian talent that really they haven't gotten that one break yet. But there's so much talent, and... You know, it's going to keep growing because so many guys are seeing what the indies are like, and they're also seeing how many indie guys are getting signed by WWE. So you're going to get the hardest workers. You're going to get, like, the I best. I get exactly best. what um, you're saying, dude. Like, Mike Bailey. Who knew Mike Bailey out here besides the Canadian, you know, in the um, Canada scene? Like, more people know who Mike Bailey was out there. A lot of folks were in the United States didn't know that much about Mike Bailey till he, you know, stepped in the scene with PWG, Evolve, CZW, you know, and now he's red hot. He's one of the best wrestlers in the world, you know? Like, like I said, they could be replaced. Like, if we go back, we didn't know who Trevor Lee was until he hit out here in PWG. He wasn't a, a, a no name. Like, PWG, a, AAW, Beyond, they know how to replace wrestlers. Like, that's what they do, you know? They find the best in the world to wrestle in their promotions. That's that's what I'm saying. All those promotions will be fine. Nothing, you know, to worry about. But uh but the question is like some 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 like wrestlers, who you guys think is gonna be the guys like to step up once these guys get signed? Like 
I kind of see like guys like Timothy Thatcher, you know, stepping up, uh, like a Mike Bailey stepping up. Like these guys will be big names in the indie scene once you know you see these guys, uh, you know, disappear and go to NXT or whatnot. Yeah, you know what? It's um, it's kind of funny that you know I know, I know it's a very like a little bit off top, top subject, but you know I was reading this thing on Sports Illustrated. Sports Illustrated actually mentioned the indie scene of wrestling, and they're discussing who should be in WWE. You know, there's Shinsuke Nakamura, and they're buying Sports Illustrated. In mind this is the top guy that the top indie names that should go to WWE, and I don't know if WWE is going to be looking at them or possible names I'm going to name, but We'll see, but what, the number one name was uh, Shinsuke Nakamura. Then, then you have AJ Styles, the Young Bucks. They were all on that list. You know, they're top names. I have a feeling the Bucks are going to go still, like, but not now. Not this year. They nah, will nah, still. Nah, nah, nah. I really, nah. They will. If anything, 2016. If anything, 2016, not, not anytime soon. I didn't say this year. I said they're going to go. I know. But, I, said, I know. Yeah. But I, I'm saying I kind of agree with you. But, um... Yeah, we'll see. But I mean, if anything, like I'm, I'm trying to look at the PWG, the PWG name list. Like, okay, obviously Zack Saber is going to become the next champion. So, I mean, Mike Bailey's a guy's name you mentioned. He could be um, like one of the top indie names. Uh, Thatcher, you already named some of them. Trevor Lee. I mean, we got to wait till his whole global force thing. How the, how they work out? Because if you heard, they just got a new deal uh, from the UK, so we'll see where that goes. Yeah. yeah. So when I'm looking at the next big names for the indie scene, obviously, you know Mike Bailey, Trevor Lee are some of the first names that come to mind. Timothy Thatcher is really gonna uh, be, I, I think, like the number one technical guy besides the Zack Sabre Jr. Those two guys, are, I think, are going to really lead a lot of the technical wrestling into the indie scene going forward. Um, Andrew Everett, Andrew Everett, he, he's out of his mind. Um, and, you know, I, I, I see guys like Angelico getting more uh, indie bookings. I wouldn't say he's going to be in the next big like, indie Jack star. Evans has been killing it, too. Like, I mean, he kind of you know, recreated himself at PWG um, by letting the folks know, like, you know, I've done this. I've been here, you know. So uh, I also see Pentagon Jr. like starting to get, you know, booked more at PWG and some more of the yeah. things that were there this past weekend. So that's what I'm saying. Like, they can easy, they can find wrestlers to wrestle there on a regular basis. Like, it's... Yeah. It's it's like like you said. All you have to do is look at the indie promotions today. You look at you know PWG. You look at Evolve. You look at AAW, AIW, Smash Wrestling. You look on those cards, and there's a good mix of talent. You know, there's some well-known names. You know, like Chris Hero and Beth Busick, and sometimes you know like Eddie Edwards and Davey Richard. Uh, you know, they're getting more indie bookings because of TNA, but um, all you have to do is look on those rosters, and those guys coming up are going to be the next big things. I even have a fellow that Tommy Yen is another one uh, that, you know, you can see him come back and forth, basically, um, to Pete up and, you know, different promotions out here in um, in, the, uh, so, uh, in the U.S. So, but yeah. Um,. NXT. Did you guys watch NXT? I did. I did. A little bit of it. All right. Let's go over this NXT. Uh, basically, you know, this week was uh, the week for the uh, Dusty Rose Tag Team Classic. Uh, you start off, they start off with Rhino and uh, Baron Corbin tagging up, going against the Ascension. Uh, I, I really feel bad for the Ascension because there's... It doesn't matter if they're on the main roster. Even NXT, where they started, you know, they're jobbing out. They jobbed out to Baron Corbin and Rhino. So, um, Rhino and Baron Corbin basically advanced to uh, the second round. Uh, not not surprised here. I don't see Connor or Victor really doing, you know, that much besides 
um, joining a small jobber stable with with fucking uh, Stardust. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, I saw that on SmackDown today. They they aligned with Stardust. They they all attacked Neville. But um, going back to NXT, I mean, yeah, I'm already I already got two picks to win this tournament, and one of them is that it's either Cor- Corbin or Rhino or the other tag team we were talking about earlier, Johnny Gargano and and Tommaso Ciampa to win it all. I'm picking one of those two teams to win it all. Uh, you want to? I'm pretty sure it's really not that much to really talk about in this match. But do you have any thoughts in the matchup? It sucked. It is. It's such a shame to see how far the ascension have fallen. And it's, you know, I I said this when I was talking about when they, you know, were first getting on the main roster. You know, they're not the best as far as like in ring or promos go, but. It, it would have been passable if they were booked right, but they were just booked to look like a joke. And even going back to NXT is not going to do anything. Um, and you be, I, I think you can just tell that, you know, they just, they, it looks like they don't have enough motivation anymore. It looks like they've just kind of like, I don't want to say given up completely, but they're definitely uh, getting to that point. Yeah. We'll see what happens with this whole Ascension Cody uh, Rhodes, aka Stardust storyline. This this is basically Stardust's group. Nobody, they're just the guys, that, you know, in the back, you know. So, but uh, I I heard somebody say, "Will the Ascension change their paint? Stop it! Not happening. For what?" Stardust has his own thing going. You know, you you don't want a whole crew to look to look the same. This ain't demolition. <laughs> but uh, so let's go on. Let's move on. Uh, Neville and and uh, Solomon Crow actually tag up to go against to, to tag up to go against the, the uh, tag team of Mister. Um, Jordan and Mr. Um, actually, you know, Gable. this is, yeah, this is, yeah, I was going to say, this is the guy that, I forgot who was putting Gable over. Somebody was putting Gable over here on here. And uh, they actually go against Solomon Crow. I think it was Tom, and, um, and, think it was Tom was and, and Matt did. Yeah. Yeah, like Chad, Chad Gable and Jason Jordan. I, I was surprised that they actually uh, came up on top in that match. It was one crazy match, though, though. Uh, you guys just I, I, wasn't su- I wasn't surprised. I mean, I, I, it feels like they got they 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 see something on these two, these two ta- this this team right here, and um, and Jason Jordan. I mean, lately he's been improving a lot the last few months. To be honest, that show we went to skip that NXT show against Bull. I mean, it was not the best match, but he improved his ring work, uh, you know, big time. You know, he's almost like a Kurt Angle type thing. If you if you if you go back to that match, doing all these freaking um, freaking back suplexes and everything, kind of reminds me of like a black Kurt Angle. <laughs> and and now he's in this part of tag team with Chad Gable. I mean, it seems like they're all. You know, I actually like this tag team. Yeah, this might be like a future, tag, tag a future future NXT tag champs right here for sure. I mean, I remember it went it started from. The next world's greatest tag team till everybody's all over this tag team, and now you know they're 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 they're, they're, they're a future NXT tag team champs down the road. The question is when will it happen? We'll see. But I, I would like to pick these guys to win this tournament. But I, I don't. This is actually my pick right here. I'm picking Jordan yeah? and uh, uh, Gable for sure. That's Man, if they pick. win that tournament, that's huge for them, and they have to get a tag title shot that, like pretty soon. One of these takeovers, maybe the UK takeover. They have to they have to get a tag title shot if they win it. But um, we'll see. I mean, I like it. And and, and, and back to Neville and um, Solomon Crow. I'm starting to think Solomon Crow needs a new gimmick. I mean, this whole Y2J 2.0 looking gimmick, God, I think it needs to stop. He needs to turn heel or something. And, you know, I, the good, if they're planning to do that, they're starting a good way to have him lose and lose. You know, he, he lost to fucking Ty Dillinger. So... I, I you know, know what? I actually like Ty Dillinger. 
I actually like Ty. Why? Uh, you, I know that. You, I know Ty yeah. Dillinger is a hill. I like the tan thing. I'm I'm a big fan of it. But I know a lot of folks probably don't like Ty Dillinger, but uh, the dude has definitely created something for himself. So I'm with the whole tan uh, gimmick right now. Um, but I had to give Solomon Crow and Neville like mad props, like especially Solomon Crow. Like, wow, like this dude was going all out. Like I, I ain't seen no shit like that since, since fucking his indie days, you know. Like I ain't seen him do suicide dives and shit in a minute. Yeah, he, the Solomon Crow definitely. They need to find what's right for him because that's been the problem with him ever since he got to WWE. Is they just haven't found what fits him perfectly. And the the thing that confuses me the most is that all these indie guys that they've brought in, they've not really changed their characters from when they were on the indie scene. They're basically the same people. They should do that with Solomon Crow. Make him what he was in CZW. Uh, you know, he can cut these crazy promos where you believe the guy is actually out of his mind and you believe there's something really wrong with him. And I've said this before. I, I It's it definitely won't ever happen, but I think it would be a great idea. You turn Solomon Crow heel, and you you have him do a bunch of crazy promos, start kicking the shit out of people. I think a great storyline for NXT would be Solomon Crow attacks Drake, the referee, and he starts. Wow, that would be nuts, nice, bro. That would be nuts. I swear that would be nuts because yeah. people don't know the whole Solomon Crow Drake younger yeah. whole. Um, you know, few that shit would be nuts. It's hard to say. And, and the, you know, the NXT crowd knows who Drake is, and they love him. And you could base a whole storyline around Solomon Crow saying, you know, I knew who this guy used to be. He used to be a wrestler, but he gave up because he couldn't cut it, and he had to become a referee. And it would just be so great. But um, we'll, we'll see what happens with Man. Solomon Crow. I, I, like I said, I really like Chad Gable and Jason Jordan. I think they're both incredibly talented. I think. Um, you know, Chad Gable is just, he's hilarious. He is, he's so funny. He has so much charisma. Um, and and it, it's a perfect example of guys that WWE has built up that work. Uh, same thing with Jason Jordan. You know, a lot of people are kind of paying attention only to the indie talents that are coming in because, you know, the other talents like Baron Corbin, and uh, and with Dana Brooke and stuff like that, they they don't kind of resonate with the NXT crowd and uh, with a lot of the older kind of kind of smarkier crowd. But Gable and uh, Jason Jordan, they're perfect because they have charisma. They can go in the ring, and that's all you need. That's all you need to to win people over. Is you have a good, you know, have some good promos, be very good in the ring, and you'll be over. Either as heels or faces, it doesn't matter. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping that they're tag team champions uh, pretty soon. I think they would. I think they'd be great. Um, and I, I, I can't wait. Like I said, I think Chad Gable is going to be a huge, huge star once he gets to the main roster. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. It's something different. Definitely, dude. Um... All right, I had to mention the Divas. Alexa Bliss going to blue pants, and Alexa Bliss going over. I to say, what the fuck was that? Why? Why WWE? Why um, Alexa Bliss went over uh, blue pants? Yes. Why? <laughs> For what? Um, I understand that Alexa Bliss might be an actual signed uh, NXT superstar, I mean, the match was like just let make them blue pants look like a bum. Look, make her look like real well, trash. Well, maybe we... because okay, now that you know Bailey's the champion, who you got going against Bailey? You now? have to. I don't care. What nobody says. I'm glad you mentioned that. I'm glad you mentioned that because Bailey and Sasha Banks are having a war on Twitter. You know, arguing or whatnot. You know how it is. Storyline mode. You got to keep it yeah. going on Twitter. Sasha Banks. She deserves to get her rematch. She's got to get her rematch before, you know, she officially is main roster for sure. She needs that one rematch. That's got to happen. I don't know when. It might happen on NXT TV. It might even happen at a takeover, but who knows. But 
that's what you do. You have Sasha Banks get the rematch, and then Emma, who's also been talking lately uh, on on NXT since she beat um, Charlotte, uh, Dana Brooke, and um, Becky Lynch. Oh, you mean the box finished? <laughs> well, hey, it's in the books, and I'm with it because I think Emma is better than all those girls. Uh, I mean, we know Charlotte's a main roster type of chick right now. And Becky Lynch's main roster, but Dana Brooke it would be the last person. So I bet I'm 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 with Emma Ben and the number one contender scene because she deserves it. And I like how she mentioned how her and Paige. You can't forget her. You know, you you also have to mention Emma because we started the, this uh, whole uh, revolution at the first takeover, and that's one of the best female matches I've seen it um, on the NXT for sure. So folks, if you ain't seen that, y'all gotta go see that. Um, yeah, I'm with. Yeah, I mean, right right now, like, I think they have time to like look around and see who could be the next challenger for Bailey. So obviously, this rematch is going to happen between Sasha Banks and uh, Bailey down the road. But right now, they're looking at other chicks right now. Who can, we, can it be a Alexa Bliss? And please, God, don't be don't don't. I hope it's not Eva Marie. They're looking around all these other. I think um, Eva Marie. Yeah. Since we're on the Eva Marie subject, I think Eva Marie did good this week. She did better than well, you know. She did uh, the usual. finish. Me. She I thought she did better. Finish. I thought she did better than that than um the last NXT uh show that she did. Not the um takeover, but the one before that. I think she did way better. That's just my opinion. Okay, I agree. I mean, everything was okay. I agree some of it, but. You no, know it sucks about her that this the NXT crowd is not giving her a chance at all. That that you know, that sucks. You know, I mean, they still look at her like she still can't wrestle. They're not even giving her a chance, bro. I mean, that that fucking sucks. And then and only that she she botched the well, she's supposed to kick out his pinfall. She yeah, and, and uh, she botched that. You know, you could tell that was heavily edited, and the crowd went nuts. I mean, not nuts, but I mean they were they were pissed off. And then, you know, they had to finish the match with the slice red. And then, you know, she was, I know, looking at her face, she she looked like she did. She knew she fucked up. But um, but, but during that match, I remember at one point, she did yell at the referee to get off me. Like, you could say her acting skills got better. So, I don't know. Her ring work, I see her ring work. Way I just got to give her credit. The chick is trying. Hate her or love her, she's trying. Yeah, I know she's trying, but it's just that it sucks that the crowd still don't believe her. I don't know. I'm not even gonna go to, I'm not even gonna go to uh, time because I know time's gonna shit on it. So <laughs> I, I I think Eva Marie is still shit. Like I said, you you go and train and you're still botching stuff like crazy. It's I I have not seen significant improvement in Eva Marie, and she's been in WWE for a while. So I uh, I she could be okay. But I don't see her being like I don't see her being really good. Um, but I'm I'm not gonna go in. Like I said, her slice her slice bread is terrible. I don't care what anybody fucking says. It is absolutely god awful. And like I said, you're coming you're you're training with Brian Kendrick who can do a slice bread, you know, out of nowhere. So you you should be able to pull off a better slice bread than that. But um. Going back to the whole Alexa Bliss thing, I, obviously they're building her up, and, you know, they're building Emma up. The big problem right now with NXT and the women's division is there's really no baby faces. You think about Bailey is really the only big baby face. You have Dana Brooke, who's a heel, Eva Marie, who's a heel, Alexa Bliss, who's a heel. Probably I mean, that, Blue Pants is kind of that face, too, where she's not a regular. That's the only thing. She's not like consistently on there. Like, you need somebody week after week who's going to be on there. And I'm pretty sure that Nia Jax... I think Eva Marie is... Po- what is... What is... What the fuck is Eva Marie? Because I'm going to... I don't know. What oh, the fuck she, is she? I mean, she's a heel. Like, nobody she's a heel. likes her. Nobody likes her. And she plays She plays it up. So she's a heel. And that, that Nia Jax is going to be debuting soon. I'm pretty sure she's going to be a heel because you're going to have a monster woman. You can't really have her be a baby face. So... I'm hoping that, like I said, I don't know if Athena's going to get signed, but say that she does, she could be a big baby face. And if you're going to bring in Kana, see, that's like the per- it's like perfect timing because obviously Nia Jax, because of her size, she's going to get a big push. 
you know, just on her size alone. So then you bring in Kana, and she starts kicking the shit out of her, literally, because she probably could. Um, that's another big baby face. So they, they need to kind of even up the dynamic between the faces and the, uh, and the heels down for the NXT women, because it's very lopsided right now. Yeah. Um, my boy, um, I almost said his own name. I almost said Uha. Uh, <laughs> my boy, uh, Apollo Cruz was in action. Job, some bum, took care of him. Uh, I'm just waiting to see, uh, oh, when hey, he's. Don't, don't, be calling, don't be calling Martin Stone a bum. <laughs> Mar- Martin Stone's not a bum. He's just, he's a job in WWE, but he can put on good matches and evolve. I didn't, so you know, it's funny. I didn't know that was Martin Stone from Evolve, yeah. right? Yeah. So he's not a bum. He's just he's a jobber in WWE. Well, okay, he's getting work. He's getting exposure. That's what helps. Uh, all right. I was talking to uh, both of you guys earlier. Your top five feuds you would like to see uh, Finn Balor defend his title. Um, is his title on the line before he makes the main roster. Top five feuds you guys would like to see him uh, with. Let's uh, start with you, Oscar. All right. Uh, number five, you guys might not like it, but and I don't like this pick either, but he's my number five. But uh, number five is going to be Baron Corbin. I mean, he's, he's my least favorite, but there's not that much names out there, so... I cannot put what, fucking, what, Bull Dempsey over fucking Baron Corbin. But it'll be an interesting storyline to see you know, when if these guys are, you know, the character he has right now, Baron Corbin, like, okay, he doesn't give a shit about paying dues and all that. He just want to make money right away. Side deal against a guy who did pay his dues. He went all over Japan. He cleaned toilets and shit before he made a big time in Japan. You know, you you're going against a guy who spit the face of that, and you think he's all that because he used to play for the Arizona Cardinals, and he made more money than Finn Balor ever made in his whole life, then, yeah, it's a good storyline right there. So, But I know that match ain't going to be great. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I guess I'll put that number five. Number four. All right. This one it might take a long shot, but it, it, we'll see. I'm going I'm to play my hopes, but... Johnny Gargano. All right. If uh, if uh, keep Gargano around for a while, or not, I'm not, or or they could have um Balor stay in the wild, which I think he still will be. I mean, I just still see him, you know, staying the whole 2015 in NXT. Um, then I think that'll be an interesting match. I mean, don't matter if you turn Gargano heel or you give him babyface, you hype up a takeover team or two. I think they'll they'll do a killer match. Just like how Neville and um, and Balor did in the takeover match, you know, even though Johnny Gargano doesn't have the same skills as Neville, I mean, um, I believe those two could have could have a good match. So that that'll be interesting to see it with Gargano and and Balor. They never wrestled each other before, but it'll be interesting to see these guys get it on. Number three, um, my number three pick would be Tyler Breeze. I mean. The guy, we we've seen two, I mean, some few matches between the two. I mean, I'm sure Balor mostly won them all, but you know, what an interesting storyline if you if you gonna lead a takeover between the two. You know, you know, the story is that Tyler Breeze wants a title shot, and not only that, he wants to beat Finn Balor because Balor always gets the best of him. I mean, that will be interesting. that will be a good storyline, and maybe we'll tease us that. Um, Tyler Breeze will win the, the championship from from Finn Balor, so I I'd like to see those two get it on as well. Number number two, which I think is gonna happen pretty soon, uh, Finn Balor and Samoa Joe. It's funny that on NXT, you know, the, the Samoa Joe act, didn't act like how we all seen Samoa Joe is. He acts like he, he comes to him telling we're gonna win this thing, right? And I never seen. Samoa That's Joe obviously come. happening. Yeah, I could see them losing, and Joe gets frustrated and attacks Finn Balor for losing the tournament, and he wants a title shot. I could, I could see Samoa Joe turning heel, going after Finn Balor. 
So that's that's the next deal, and that's my number two pick, Samoa Joe Finn Balor. Number one is the guy I want to see when he comes back from injury, and that is Hideo Atami. One more time. You know, they, they had a killer match before, and also um, at that one WrestleMania thing, thing they had, it was, uh, you know, they both one-on-one so far. Now they're going to have... Um, they should have like a third match before he goes to the main roster, and and maybe that's the way how you you know have Finn Balor leave TNT to the main roster, and have Hideo take the title from him, and and um, you know Finn Balor can move on to the main roster. So I like to see those guys get out one more time before Finn Balor gets to the main roster. All right, um, Tom. Uh, my five guys I'd like to see Finn Balor go against. Um, I'm not going to go in. I won't go in much depth, but I will say Solomon Crow, Apollo Crews, Tyler Breeze, Samoa Joe, um, Hideo Itami. I think those are the top five guys. I think I think Baron Corbin's eventually going to get an NXT title shot, but I think it's going to come after Finn Balor moves on. Um, I think those five guys that I mentioned deserve a shot over Baron Corbin anyway. Um, so I'd like to see those five guys go against it, go against um, Finn Balor. They would all be good matches. Uh, you could tell different stories. With with all those matches, so um, yeah, those those are my top five guys, and it's it's tough because with all the names you know being rumored to come into WWE, it's like there's you know four four guys that could have you know four more good matches with Finn Balor, uh, so it's crazy to think that you know with all these new signees they might not even get a chance to get into the ring with Finn Balor. So, but those are those are the five guys I think uh, Finn Balor should face um, or would face before he heads up to the main roster. Yeah, and mine's definitely not in order. Also, but uh, of course Tyler Breeze is one for sure. Uh, you know Breeze deserves to get some love uh, before he makes the main roster too. Because if you look back. Majority of all the guys that are on the main roster that came from NXT. Uh, you know they all got a title shot. Even Bo Dallas, he was a champ. So you know, you know what I mean. Even Big E, you know, everybody had a title shot. You know what I mean. So I think Tyler Breeze deserves it. You know, so uh, let's give Breeze some um, some love before he goes. Uh, another person, just because uh, you know he's one of the best in the indie scene for sure. Uh, and I believe uh, I believe you just mentioned it too. Uh, Apollo Cruz is another one. We know what Cruz can do, so uh, Cruz definitely deserves it. Uh, maybe work a little story with them too. Uh, maybe not right now, but soon. Uh, another person, Samoa Joe, of course, is definitely uh, for sure going to happen. It's a must happen. If it don't happen, then uh, that would be the biggest mistake. Uh, you know, because you got one of the best there, and he deserves it. Um, and I think I'm going to have to agree with Oscar, you know, maybe throw Barry Corbin a bone, you know, maybe throw him a small bone. And uh, last but not least, Hadell Tommy for sure, when he comes back, because that's another one. You know, as I really, I'm still calling it. I don't think Kevin Owens is the one that took him out. I think it was Finn Balor took him out so he can get that title shot, you know? So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean you, just, you still think Dean Fowler's going to turn heel. I doubt it. I mean, now you could change the story that Samoa Joe is the one that injured Hideo Otani. So, I doubt Balor would turn heel anytime soon. I think the He's a top draw right now in NXT. I doubt him that I'm for Neil. What was that? No, I said that 
I I don't think he's gonna they're gonna make him the one to attack today with Tommy. You see the fact that, you know, he's a top draw in NXT, there's no way you're gonna turn him heel. The only way that I mean I'm thinking they're gonna go with some more joke because if you, if you think about it, if you, you want to make a storyline, you know, the, the Joe day is there, another Tommy option. Just kinda, Joe definitely is another option. Yeah, because you know, the day he got option. hurt, it was day Joe. Joe made his debut. Joe is definitely another option. I never thought about that. Yeah, but uh, I mean, it, it could. I, I they probably wanted to do Finn Balor, but you know what? Why not do some more Joe? They probably thinking because you know Finn Balor is a top draw in NXT. You know I, I read some interviews that you know with Finn Balor. He mentioned that you know he's not in a rush to go on the main roster at all. You know when he first signed the deal, he admitted he wants to be in NXT for a bit and go to the main roster, but he's not in no rush. You know he likes the way everything's going right now in NXT. So why rush going to the main roster? You know if, if it takes him two years, fuck it. He doesn't care. You know he's a top draw in, in NXT. You know, why, why rush go to the main roster? I mean, I I love to see him there. I'm sure you guys like to see him there. I mean, he'll make a fucking crazy ass WrestleMania entrance. But you know, you should take this time. You know, he he can. You don't have to rush going to the main roster. We love you know, just kick back, relax. He, that's what he's doing, and he's happy. He, as long as he's happy, he's happy. You know, that's what all matters. Yeah. Yeah. Real quick, gentlemen, take a quick break. Uh, I got some. More news that I want to, like, talk about. So, we'll be right back. Oh, yes, yeah, yes. Blog talk sucks. Our, our, our sound baits don't work anymore for some reason. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm over here. I just pressed yeah, one. Yeah, I gotta tell you that. I gotta tell you that. <laughs> that. What's up? This is the phenomenal AJ Styles. Down here in uh, LA, kicking it with the uh, PWG, busting my tail. Freaking great tournament, the bowl tournament is freaking amazing. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, everybody and anybody needs to listen to Wrestling Head Podcast. Yeah, you're definitely right. All of them don't work. But, uh... I, AJ Styles is the only one that works. I'm sorry to tell you that. You better say what's Ooh. up, Rock Talk or. Fucking vlog talk. Uh, I'm, I'm going right, to try right. one more, folks. We'll probably uh, continue the show. So we'll try right. one more. <laughs> Don't stop believing! <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> uh, but Biff Busick is what I was trying to play, and it did not work. Yeah, I don't know. For some reason, it, it, those other just don't work. But, uh, yeah. but anyways... People that are from San Diego, if you're listening, what's wrong with your pitching? You guys killed seven straight runs. What's going on now? What was that? I said to the people who listen to San Diego, what's wrong with their Padres? They killed seven straight runs. Hey, they suck. <laughs> <laughs> you um, can keep Matt Kemp. Go ahead. All right, gentlemen. P.W., I, top 500, dropped today. So the Seth Rollins, John Cena, AJ Styles, Roman Reigns, and Nakamura, I think we're top five. Mm, not bad. I'm okay with that. I'm definitely okay with it. Uh, just I don't know about Roman Reigns. Yeah, you know, it's funny. DWI, I mean, they come up with some weird lists. Like, okay, the best wrestler is John Cena. He's better than everybody. Seth Rollins like, is actually number one. I know, I know, but they be like, in the past they become some weird ass fucking um, list. I, I remember at one point I think they said the Usos was better than the Young Bucks. Kiss my ass, you know the Usos ain't better than the Young Bucks. You know, my boy Kota Ibushi made person. forty. Huh? Kota, I said Kota Ibushi made forty. ACH made fifty-eight. Um, where's Ishii at? Uh, let me take a look. It's in alphabetical order here. Uh, sheesh. If you guys want to look at it, um, uh, it's on, uh, Depth to All Marks' uh, Twitter page. So, uh, I'm, I'm not, just throwing it out there. I'm not, I don't even want, bother looking at their list, because their list is, like, total bullshit sometimes, you know? I'm like, I don't, I don't, 
I don't take PWI 500 seriously because they like they do it like. I think Tyler Bam is on there. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I saw a lot of indie names, but they were like in the. Roddy Strong is 62. Bull, see that's see that's where I I I, I, get, I lose all credibility. Roger Strong should be like number three or number four. But because of PWI, they still like keeping K Fabe and like title wins and all that. So like Bray White is twenty one. That's yeah. false. Like I said, I don't I don't take PWI five hundred very seriously, and a lot of people shouldn't because Zach Sabre Jr. is fucking one hundred and sixty five. Come on, bro. Yeah. See, that's that's bullshit. It's I don't know why we're wasting our time talking about this shit. Yeah, know. I don't know. I don't know why you brought it up. I, but there's I some, it. but but there's some guys that deserve it that are actually, you know, got a good number. Um, like I'm looking right here. I just saw Kyle, uh, Kevin Owens is number ten. Uh, Kenny Omega is fifty four. Um, uh, I just saw Kyle Riley's number, uh, number. It was a pretty good number from what I just saw. Uh, but. The thing is, is, some names are, you know, getting well numbers that they deserve. Pentagon Jr. is 95. Hmm. Prince Puma is 16. I wonder what Ricochet Prince is. Prince Puma is 16. Ha. I, anyway. saw, I think Ricochet was in the top 20. Or, like, the top 30. Well, Prince Puma is, I guess, because they, they're two different characters. Uh, I, I got something interesting we could talk about besides this fucking PWI. Uh, something that happened on SmackDown, like two, well, one thing I can say. Um, um, Gavin Owens, he was in a backstage interview with um, Renee Young. Renee asked him, what's next for Kevin Owens? Because he beat the star of title? Y. Yep, feed me more. He said he wants an IC title shot. So what you guys think? Um you think he's going to take the title from Ryback? He or? needs to. Needs to. Because Ryback, his credibility as a fucking IC champion has been the most boring thing I've ever seen in my life. Period. Ryback in the WWE, period, is the most boring thing in my life. Anything with Ryback is boring. Curtis Axel, maybe has saved his life for a bit. For a bit he saved it. But he is terrible. Yeah, I mean... Huh. The, the hope the sake to be resurrected in kind champion. I'm sorry, right back ain't that guy. Well, Kevin Owens can be. You know, if you put look at the most potential feuds, if you, you can have for Kevin Owens if he becomes your kind champion. Look, think about it. you could have a rematch with Cesaro. Think about this name, interesting name. You guys probably be like, eh, but think about it. Randy Orton. Why not Randy Orton? Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, Intercontinental title feud. Now you can make that title mean something. Having a former WWE champion, a Hall of Famer, a future Hall of Famer, going after Kevin Owens, Intercontinental champion. Think about that. That would be great. Now you can make Intercontinental title mean something. I think you can also, even though they're not doing it big, with, I know he's in the field right now, but sooner down the road, you can also throw guys like Neville in there to just have matches with him, you know. So he can just, oh, have yeah. some pretty, just to have him have some pretty good matches on Raw or SmackDown, you know, as the IC champ. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, you could do, this is all these names out there you could put out there. Don't give him no bullshit views by him against the big show or him and R Truth for their time. Please don't do that. You got, you got all these names out there. You can have Kevin Owens keep the title until all the way to WrestleMania. So, if anything, you, you got, if the WWE does it right, yeah, I mean, your kind of title may be something interesting again. But half the roster is doing it, but it's up to the fucking creative team to make it right. But please, I don't want to see no fucking uh, him at right back again or Big Show or even, or even Mark Henry. Jesus Christ, you know. That's what I'm scared of. Kevin Owens and, and uh, Mark Henry feud. Yeah, man. Uh, I definitely, I'm definitely with you, though. Definitely with you, yeah. like... You you can do some big things with Kevin Owens as IC champ, but the question is, uh, we'll see what happens on Monday Night Raw because uh, I'm pretty sure they're gonna bring that storyline all over. Um, you can also have him feud with Dean Ambrose as another person. You know, you could put Dean Ambrose in there. You could put Roman Reigns in there. It's it's a couple guys you can do. You know, so but 
I'm with it, and I'm pretty sure um, Tom's with it too. Yeah, as long as uh, Kevin Owens just beats the shit out of Ryback, completely squashes and jobs him. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, you, you you need to elevate that title, and you need to put it on someone that's uh, that has a lot of momentum and a lot of heat. And Ryback didn't have that. Ryback never had that. Ryback is boring. Nobody cares. Um, but with Kevin Owens, there's a lot more interest because he's such a good heel. You know, there's so many different things that you can do. There's so many different competitors that you can put against him. And it also adds into the fact um, because uh, most realistically what's going to happen and it might not happen but what a lot of fans are pointing to is Royal Rumble Kevin Owens is in He's he he, he could be dominating I think they might have him oh, do that it's, it's happening it's happening bro I know what you're going to go to yeah. Sami Zayn yeah. it's and happening exactly Sami Zayn debuts and then and then you know because the whole storyline of them in NXT. Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn. Well, Sami Zayn was NXT champion. And he he finally won it after all the tries, after all the mishaps, he finally won it. And Kevin Owens took it away and injured him. Now he's back. Now Sami Zayn is getting revenge, and he's going to try and take Kevin Owens, he's going to try and take that IC title off of him. So he's getting revenge in that fact. It, it's like, it is so simple and such a perfect story, but like WWE doesn't do that. Like They like to complicate things, and they like to make things, you know, a, a, a lot more complex than it needs to be. It's a simple storyline. It'll work. Sami Zayn will be over. Kevin Owens will be the heel. You can have months of promos. You can have attacks, and you have a good WrestleMania match. Boom. Intercontinental title match right on the card. It has interest. People are going to be involved in it that, you know, people care about, and the crowd's going to be into it. Right there, plain and simple. It, like I said, doesn't need to get more complicated than that. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. We'll see if that ever happens. But another thing that's very interesting I saw on SmackDown, Charlotte told Nikki Bella that, you know, you know they have their match tonight at Champions, but she went to the authority to make sure they have a match for the Diva title before the clock, I mean, the countdown ends, you know, for the, for the record. So if I was WWE, now you have football on the way coming the season, why not do something shocking? You know, if, if you guys want to go against Monday Night Football, why not have something interesting? Why not have this Charlotte and um, Nikki Bella match for the Diva Championship? Have her take the title off of her, and maybe you do something to make it do watchable besides football. Because right now, like I said, I'm a Rams fan. They don't play Monday Night Football this year. So you have a chance for someone like me to watch it, you know? Just saying. Yeah. Um, I also want to throw out something else. Uh, reports also, uh, he called Rashia. Uh, will be um, it's a possibility she'll be working with the WWE too uh, from sources that uh, I know. So uh, look 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 out for that name too. As also uh, Kana, uh, I think we all saw her at Takeover. She was in a uh, front row. Uh, her her yeah. medical uh, test, she just did that. So she should be coming around sometime in October. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, always can I mispronounce her name? Her Kira. I mean, she's. If you guys are not familiar with her, she's. Um, she performs at a uh, Ice Ribbon out there in Japan. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure if you. I don't know if you guys watch Ice Ribbon. I watch some of their stuff, but um, yeah. I mean, you can find it in Daily Motions. You can see her matches there. She's another uh, name you can watch. So check out the promotion Ice Ribbons if you're into like all that Japanese stuff. I mean, you see her in there. There's more talent in there too. So. I mean, I don't. I haven't watched much of her stuff, but if they're interested, they're interested. I'd be interesting, and I'll, I'll probably look into more of her stuff and you maybe watch if she's interested. So another thing I want to mention, I think they're about to start a new fucking gimmick with Adam Rose called Party Pooper, the Party Pooper. So uh, that's 
really nothing to really talk about. I just want to mention that to the WWE fans. Um, some more interesting news. Rey Mysterio and Alberto Upertron, both, um, they're open and returning to the WWE. Thoughts? Okay. Uh, Alberto, I'm shocked because... They only said okay. by the schedule. The schedule can't be, like, ridiculous, though. Okay. I like Alberto, but he cannot have a freaking... I don't think they'll give him a, like a, like a Shawn Michaels-type schedule. I mean, I doubt it. I mean... I mean, I know he became the WWE champion of all, and all that, but... I mean, do we see him like a guy like Randy Orton or or John Cena or freaking I don't even know John Cena Tala shows, but I mean do we do you see his name fit in there when he was in WWE? I don't think so. I mean if he stayed a little longer, yeah, he can have that kind of schedule. You see Randy Orton is looking for a lighter schedule because he's getting older now, so you know, he's looking for something like how Shawn Michaels did. He never worked house shows, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. They will do T V and stuff like that. Um, you know, knowing the WWE, Rey Mysterio will make the money, so they'll do whatever it takes to get that. Yeah, to, see, to Rey get Mysterio dude. is the type. He, Rey Mysterio is the type of guy he could deserve to have that life schedule. He deserves way more than Al, Alberto. See, Rey Mysterio could draw. I mean, he, he could draw merchandise up on WWE. He could still do that. I mean, that's why they still kept him on contract and still let him go a year earlier because they know he can his name, shows, merch, and everything. Um, but but. Obviously, we all know Rey Mysterio cannot work in, a, in their, you know, actual schedule. I mean, he needs a lighter schedule. He, he, I don't think he's healthy enough to do it. I mean, I'm happy where he is right now, actually. He's just doing AAA and uh, other independent, other indie shows. But, you know, he's he's not that type of guy that can go do all this, that brutal role schedule WWE usually does. He can't do that anymore. I mean, with his age, he, he's done. Yeah. Um, uh, your thoughts, uh, Tom? Um, it's definitely interesting. You know, obviously there was never any bad blood between, like, Rey Mysterio and WWE. He just kind of wanted to get out, and they kind of mutually parted ways, so that's not surprising. Um, Alberto Patron definitely, like Oscar said, is more surprising, but... You know, it was it was one person involved in the incident and not, you know, like the whole company. So as long as that person's gone, I'm pretty sure uh, El Patron, he was going to feel more comfortable being in there, even though, you know, I mean, there's probably more negative people in WWE who, you know, may have some undertone racism or something like that. You know, it's, <laughs> excuse me, it's not perfect there, but... um. I mean, it, 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 it's good, you know. It's never, you never want to have bad relationships with any talent, you know. Look, look, look what's been going on with, with with CM Punk, you know. You you look at what transpired with that whole situation, and you know that CM Punk's not going to be in WWE anytime soon. Will he ever come back? That's still up in the air. But you look at that, and you're just like. How could things fall apart so quickly? You know, CM Punk was a main guy, main event type guy, one of the one of the top draws, and you know now he's not there. And what's been going on? You know, the whole Cole Cabana podcast, uh, the whole lawsuit with uh, Doctor uh, Aman, and all, all these different things. So at least there's no, I, I guess, hard feelings. But uh, I, I mean, I'd be open. Rey Mysterio, he needs to have just like one more match Kapuya, in WWE. Kapuya. Yeah, he needs to have just like one more match in WWE and then retire. Because, you know, like I said, his, his knees are in bad shape. And all it takes is, you know, one more dive or one more move from the top rope and it's another knee surgery. So I, I, I think you, you put him in one more match. I don't know with who. Um you know, there's not really anybody who's been Rey Mysterio's biggest rival. You know, obviously with A. B. I think Big Show will be uh, perfect. Oh, Retirement God. match. Fuck that. Fuck that. Retirement match. Both of them go out. Do you, do you want people to fall asleep? 
You want people hey, to fuck fall it. asleep? Come back to fall asleep. No. Come, come back for all of us to fall asleep. Giant versus. I mean, I'm just thinking about it as a WWE. What they would do, big man versus little man. They that's their type of shit, you know. So well, that's the type of shit that they would do. do. What you could do for Rey Mysterio retirement match is put somebody over. Do like a Rey Mysterio versus a Kalisto, where it's the that would be awesome too. Yeah, the pioneer versus the young guy, and it's Rey Mysterio handing off the torch to Kalisto. Um, Del Rio, <laughs> excuse me, Del Rio, um, you know, he's still got, I, I think, a, you know, more good years left in him. So um, I don't know what they would do with him. Like I said, when they had him, they didn't know how to book him. Um, I would like to see him, not for a, a, a really long time, but for maybe a couple months. I'd like to see him go down in NXT and, you know, Kind of put on some great matches with some of the uh, with some of the talent down there. I think that could be interesting. But uh, yeah, you know, some interesting scenarios that could happen if they want to come back. But who knows when that's going to happen? Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. You know, it's all just talk right now. They're interested, so they're always open to come back. So let's just see what happens here, huh? So, um, real quick, let's move on. Uh, Ring of Honor, um, All Star Extravaganza event returns September 18th. Uh, I got the card right here, um, and I'm happy for this for for, for Red Dragon because they're both in title matches that night for the Ring of Honor Championship. You got Jay Lethal going against Kyle. O'Reilly. Kyle fucking deserves it, bro. I mean, he's already done big things, you know, and, and he's by himself in solo action, former PWG champ. Uh, I honestly think he, it's, it's about that time, you know, Kyle and Bobby, like, uh, uh, need to break Red Dragon up. I know Red Dragon's great, but I think Kyle is just too damn good, you know, to be in tag team for the rest of his career. I know he doesn't mind, you know, tagging up with Bobby. I mean, them in Japan, that's fine. But I think, you know, in Ring of Honor, I think it's time for the Red Dragon to go. They're, they're all separate ways. Uh, him and Jay Lethal will work well together. We know what Jay Lethal could do. Jay Lethal's been a great Ring of Honor champ. Uh, definitely looking forward to those two. Yeah, I mean, um, that, that looks like it'd be an interesting match. I mean, oh, actually, they did have a great match not long ago. But this time it's for the Ring of Honor Championship. Uh, Jay Leap has got to lose one of these titles for sure. But would it be the Ring of Honor Championship? Mm, I doubt it. But I can see Bobby Fish walking out the new TV champion for sure. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Jay Leap will lose the belt. You know, it wouldn't make much sense. And, um, you know, you know like, like you guys said, it should be still um, a very good match. I'm um, see. I'm surprised they did it so early because I thought they were going to build up Kyle O'Reilly and then kind of give him a shot later. So it was definitely, um, you know, kind of a surprise they did it so early. I predicted it was going to be O'Reilly versus Jay Lethal at Final Battle. Um, so it's kind of surprising to me that they did it so early. But, um, you know, it should still be it. It's a it's going to be a great match, and it's going to be a, you know a great draw for for the pay per view. Yeah. Uh, also, you got Bobby Fish uh, going against Jay Lethal also that night too. So Jay Lethal doing double duty. Uh, same thing like Seth Rollins did, uh, is going to be doing at Night of Champions. Uh, you guys just thought about Bobby uh, uh, and uh, Lethal. Bobby, it's going to be freaking great match. Um, I mean, they all deserve to be in this this double main event type match. I mean, why not have those 
these three get involved, and it's perfect. You know, you have Jay Lethal having two titles against both of them as a Red Dragon. I mean, it's very amazing. I mean, you guys, you get other guys getting title shots, I mean, or getting this kind of spot they've never been in before. Like, you know, I ever thought a year ago we'll see Kyle Riley in a pay-per-view main event, you know? So it's going to be interesting. And now we're going to see this... Um, you know, I kind of don't want this tag team of Red Dragons playing up in Ring of Honor, but just for the sake of their tag team division, but they're doing great things outside of the, the, the division. I'm, and I'm happy for them. Yeah, uh, uh, another great match right here. Um, you know, obviously Red Dragons a very popular team, so to have them kind of co-main event uh, in the two title matches makes sense. Um, and uh, like I said, this should be another great match. I don't, I don't think it's going to be better than O'Reilly and Jay Lethal, you know, because you know they're probably going to want to keep the TV match uh, shorter than the main event. But it should still be good. It'll be interesting to see if Bobby Fish does indeed take the title. Um, I won't throw out my predictions just yet. I'll do that for. Uh, when we do uh, the full show for All Star Extravaganza, but it's definitely interesting, and it's adding a, uh, it's adding a lot. And you know, Jay Lethal has just been awesome. Uh, so whether he wins or loses, it doesn't matter because uh, he's helped carry that TV title to where it is today. Yeah, um, same here. I probably won't throw mine out for a minute either. Um, but um, let's go ahead and finish uh, with some of the matches that will be uh, at the event. Uh, you got the Addiction going against the Kingdom uh, for the ROH Tag Team uh, titles. That, that, uh, I think that, it, that, that, that's so that? surprising because if uh, on Ring of Honor TV, it just it seems like they've been teasing a a possible Addiction and Bucks match, but I'm surprised it's not. This is not, this, that match ain't going on for for this pay per view event, and you know it's funny that if you, I think it says on the the bottom of the card it says the schedule appears with AJ Styles and the Young Bucks as well, so I'm just shocked that the Young Bucks are not involved in this match. Yeah, I, I honestly think it's time for the Kingdom to, to hold those tag team titles. To be honest with you, the Ring of Iron tag team titles is they're long overdue. Uh. You know, uh, really not that many people are, like, super on the addiction anymore, you know, like they used to when they're in TNA. So I think it's about that time uh, the kingdom some, somehow go over. I mean, I think you kind of want the, the kingdom to go over, but, I mean, it just doesn't, doesn't make sense. You know, you're, you're, you're sort of like you're teasing an apostle match in the Young Bucks and the addiction. But then you get the title to the kingdom, like, where's this going if you have the kingdom walk out of the tag title? You know, it, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. What, what confuses me about this match is you're doing this big pay-per-view and you're doing a heel versus heel title match. That's, that's not what you want to do. May I mention that the Bucks are appearing? But I think what they're going to do with the Bucks, because the Briscoes have an open challenge, I think the Bucks are going to answer that open challenge. Probably. Probably. But see, going back to this match, um, you can't do a heel versus heel on a big time show like this. Uh, you know, one that's going to be on pay per view, one that might attract some casual viewers that have never seen Ring of Honor before. You can't do heel versus heel because people are going to be confused. They're going to be like, wait, those guys are the bad guys. But wait, those guys are the bad guys. So who do I root for? Which team is supposed to be, you know, the good guys in here? Who am I supposed to, you know, want to see win? Um, I, I definitely agree. You know, the addictions run hasn't been what it could have been. I think it could have been a lot better. It definitely fell a little bit flat. So, you know, I guess you do got to put the belts back on the kingdom. But um, I think once you put them, if if they don't put the belts on the kingdom, the team that needs to be Ring of Honor champs 
soon is War Machine. I'm surprised War See, I would have done Addiction versus War Machine at this show because they've been building up War Machine for months and months now. And this would have been the perfect opportunity to um to kind of put War Machine in a big time match, get a good title change here. And, you know, War Machine's all over his faces. The crowd loves him. They could, you know, throw the addiction around. And it's a, it's fresh chance. It's fresh storylines. So um, I'm very confused by why they decided to go with this one. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. But we'll, I think it's time for the Kingdom to go over because Kingdom, they've done great shit. I think this year they've been having a fantastic gear period. Uh, you know, Japan and... You know, I think it's time for them to hold the ROH titles. They should have got the ROH, the Ring of Honor titles a while back. The Briscoes over challenge. Like I said, the Bucks probably be that team to to, to answer them. So that they are advertised to be there. Um, ACH and Matt Seidel, best of five series. This is match three, I believe. So they'll be um, having a match, and we know those those two. You know. Uh, we know those two will have a great match. You know, um, I don't think they haven't put them on TV yet. Like, what is the point of this best out of five series between the two? I mean, it's probably something like how uh, Drago and uh, Aerostar is. You know, like you know, they're 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 like good friends, but you know, they see who's the best. You know. Yeah, you know, but the difference is with that one is that I don't know, I don't I don't know if they're gonna they're gonna um. Rip off the store not in Lucha Underground, but they did it. I don't like, think it was a rip off because if that's the case, no, 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 no. Let me finish. Let me finish. I uh, I don't know if they're gonna rip them off because if you look at that, they they did it like for like who's the best, but then Dario Cuero surprised them that okay, that you he won, he gets a title shot. You know that was just a, like a surprise there. So I don't know was was this gonna lead into that's still the I don't I don't, I don't know, but. They haven't shown that on TV yet. So. Yeah, you know, it should be a good match. It's definitely interesting to see this uh, best out of five series. Um, you know, and see, you can do these type of matches, these face for face matches, because, you know, I just mentioned that you can't do heel versus heel. You could easily do face for face. Um, and it's a good match to put on the card. Uh, you know, guarantee that the crowd's going to pop for the high spots. Uh, new new people that are watching are gonna like the high flying stuff from ACH and Matt Seidel, and it's a it's definitely a drawing point, you know, because uh, a, a new fan watches that and they watch Matt Seidel and ACH go out there and do all these crazy high spots, and they're like, man, I want to see, I want to see more of that, I want to see more of these guys. So it definitely entices some people to keep watching. So I'm liking this, um, and it should be a good match on the show. Yeah. Uh, Cedric Alexander and Moose, no DQ match. You already know where this started. Um, when uh, Cedric went here and, uh, you know, Veda Scott basically, uh, you know, sided with uh, Cedric Alexander. So I'm loving this new Cedric. Yeah. I mean, maybe this is going to be the end of this feud because they've been feuding ever since then. So um, this could be an end in the feud between the two. Um Maybe because it's a grunge match, uh, so you know what they should end it. Excuse me, it's no DQ match. They've been going at it for a little, for a few months. Why not end it right there in a DQ match? Yeah, I think you got to end it here. Um, you can't go any further really than this. You know, you have to kind of end it off on a high note. And usually, you know, no DQ matches, street fights, fighter matches, cage matches, any type of special stipulation usually ends uh, ends the feud so they should end this uh, I like Keel Cedric which has been getting over as a face too so it's definitely working out so it's going to be interesting to see where these guys go going forward you know uh, you know who gets a shot at the TV title if someone gets a shot at the Ring of Honor world title it's going to be interesting to see Definitely. Uh, the boys versus Silas Young becoming a boy. Dalton Castle with the boys. <laughs> um, uh, who who are the boys? I'm kind of no, behind no, no, on no, okay, 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 
Hold on, you get you know, you're getting confused. Hold on, let me explain to everybody. The boys are those guys who the uh, Donald Castle walks with. That's why, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, okay. The, the point of stipulation is that if um, Silence Young loses this match, he becomes one of the boys. You know, the guys who walks around with, you know, Don Ca- Dalton Castle. But if Dalton Castle loses, then then um, Silence Young takes the boys from him. So that's, okay. that's what the whole, yeah, that's all the stipulations are. I think that's definitely interesting, you know, at a at an interesting stipulation. It's not just a regular match. Um, should be good, you know. Don Castle's entertaining, so is Silas Young. So, <laughs> and like I said, it, it's another drawing point because people Don Castle's so he's so damn over. Um, Hell yeah. And he's just going to keep getting more and more over. And you know, new people that are watching that. That's it, it's weird because I have to imagine for like a casual fan, you know, if this is someone's first time watching Ring of Honor, they'll be a little confused. They'll be like, "Ah, eh, Dalton Castle seems a little weird," but the crowd's kind of liking it, so I'll, I'll kind of look forward and you know see see where this goes. So you know, that's what you need. You need you need fresh characters. You need people that stand out. You know. You see, that's the difference. I, I talk about it all the time. It's the difference between Don Castle and a guy like um, Adam Page or Will Ferrara. Adam Page and Will Ferrara are so plain. They have no character depth. They have I love Adam about... Page. Yeah, he's, like I said, he's good, but like I said, he's just, he's just so plain. He looks like another normal wrestler. There's nothing about him. He's not that big. He wears, like, normal trunks. He doesn't have a different gimmick. He's just really I think he switches gimmick up big time. That's just my opinion. I think... I, I think, he's, think he's way too plain. And, you know, to be honest, aligning yourself with B.J. Whitmer is not going to do yourself a whole bunch of favors. Um, not, nothing against B.J. Sooner or you know, later, those two are going to feud. Sooner, sooner or later, I see Paige turning on B.J. Whitmer. So... But that's another yeah. subject for another day. Yeah, I want to go back to Don Castle real fast. I mean, what Tom says, you know, when, about New York Beers being this guy's going to be awesome. I mean, I show I showed the uh, his. I went to the wrestling guy store one day, and the wrestling guy is not really a big Ring of Honor guy. He doesn't really watch Ring of Honor, but I showed him a Don Castle entrance on YouTube, and he was amazed. He was like, "Wow, that's like one of the best entrances he ever seen," you know. <laughs> and I showed him that because I, I, I cause he's trying to work some things in Ring of Honor and I told him maybe he should sell this guy's merchandise. Yeah, it will sell and he just looked at their end he's entry, he's like, Wow. He was very amazed with that. But um it was funny you guys mentioned Adam Page and um and B J I think after the feud's over he has to feud with those guys next, one of them too. Because I think he just you gotta build up you gotta build up um Dalton Castle. Definitely, definitely. Um uh, also appearing at All Star Shavaganza, not booked in any matches yet. AJ Styles, Roderick Strong, the Young Bucks, Adam Cole, Michael Elgin, and I believe Watson Nabi also, and more. So we'll see what happens with ROH. Um, we'll see what they decide to uh, book in uh, certain matches. I think, uh, I think they should do Roderick Strong versus Michael Elgin, and what they could do with that is they could build a whole storyline around. Michael Elgin went to New Japan, and Roderick Strong didn't, even though Roderick Strong was putting on great matches with, like, Tanahashi, Okada, Nakamura, you know, play off of that fact. I said I, I said not too long ago that, you know, Michael Elgin's character in Ring of Honor right now is just so, it's so weird. He, he needs some direction, and if he's going to be a heel, his whole thing should be that, like, you know, the American audience, or the North American audience doesn't appreciate him like the New Japan audiences was. You know, everybody said that he was going to fail, and he went out there and kicked ass, and all these fans don't know wrestling, something like that. You know, they have to make Elgin interesting. Yeah. We'll see what happens. You know, with, um, you know those guys in that book, so we'll check and see what's happening. There's a possibility, you know, they'll have a uh, Bullet Club team up together. You know how it is, you know. They, to 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 get tickets sold, you know, to you know, they'll figure something out. But we'll we'll be right back 
have these messages. Uh, I want to mention a promotion that we'll be uh, working with right back. And fuck the right back because it's like Oscar said, Blog Talk wants to be bums. So, uh, <laughs> I think <laughs> fuck, they want to be bums. Uh, Matt, if you're listening, it's about that time that uh, we find a new home. Uh, <laughs> uh, let me go to my email real quick. Nova Pro Wrestling. I don't know if you guys heard of it, but it's a new promotion heard coming out. It's a new, it's a brand new promotion. They haven't had any shows yet, and uh, they contacted us on an email and they want to work with us. So let me um mention uh, some of the wrestlers that are going to be there. Uh, next Monday we will have someone on here representing Nova Pro Wrestling to talk more about this promotion, which is in Northern Virginia. Um, in uh, Fairfax, so it's, this this promotion is, is in VA. So you got wrestlers like Tim Dots, he'll be there. Uh, the the Bravado uh, brothers are gonna be there. Ethan, uh, yeah. Uh, you got uh, Sanjay Dutt. He's a part of this um, the show. Uh, who else we got? Uh, Chase Owens. And you have some other uh, wrestlers also that I have have not got to know yet. But, uh, you know, uh, you got a, a guy by the name of Brandon Day there. Uh, Jay Still, Bobby Shields, uh, The Reason. Uh, but uh, we decided to work with these guys, so uh, we're going to help them out. Uh, be sure to... Uh, Look out for their shows. Their first show is going to be on February 25th uh, at the Jewish Community Center of Northern Virginia. So uh, I just wanted to mention that to the folks. Monday we'll get more in-depth with this uh, promotion. So um, be on the lookout for them, people, uh, folks. Yeah, I mean, we got some couple of names in there. Bravados, um, Sanjay Dutt. I mean, seems interesting. Uh, Chase Owens, we just, he just did some New Japan just recently. I mean, I, I, if I was living in Virginia, I'd probably check these guys out. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see um, kind of what they're planning on doing, you know, because, I mean, we've talked to wrestlers and some promoters, but they, they've they already been in established promotions, so... It's going to be interesting to see kind of a viewpoint from a brand new promotion coming in, kind of like when we talked to Scott Demore, except you know Global Force is obviously a, a bigger en- entity than what this is going to be, but it's going to be in that same thing where people are going to want to know what it's about, you know, who are they looking at, uh, so it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, we have to mention this. We're not wrestling fans and we don't mention this. Jimmy Fly Super Snooker. <laughs> Jimmy Super Fly Snooker, uh Uh, he murdered somebody and uh I really don't have no thoughts but damn. And it happened in nineteen eighty three. I mean the I, crazy I, part. I heard about this like a couple of years ago. Um I thought he could have he could possibly he probably murder somebody Back in '83, but I girlfriend. guess now they found, yeah, yeah. Now they, I guess they found proof that he did it, and I just say, wow. I mean, how can like not, all this could have been solved back then? You know, just just imagine. Look, just imagine he caught him back in '83. The coconut thing will never happen. The whole thing he, he him involving the first WrestleMania. You know, walking with Hogan to the aisle, that will never happen. I mean, Mario's first match against Yensik will never happen. You know? I mean, that's, that would be crazy. But if they found him guilt, guilty about I mean, I'm pretty sure they found proof about it, but I just read that WWE got rid of, you know, his profile and all that stuff. 
hey, I don't blame them because if you if you find somebody that you know that's proved they, they killed another person, why not take them off of your page? You know, I don't blame you. So I, I don't know what what's gonna save them. I, I mean, I don't know what what they're gonna do with Snooker. I mean, I don't know how many how long it's gonna be sentenced, but. Yeah, it's getting it's 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 shocking that you know he did all this back in back in '83 and I mean, wow. <laughs> I don't, I never look at him as a guy like okay he probably does drugs or he's a fucking idiot he probably just you know he's like another Bram or anything like that hell no but you know it's shocking to hear that, that he uh, that he killed someone. Yeah, I really don't have no thoughts about it because it happened like a long time ago when motherfuckers was like <laughs> little kids. So it's just like wow. And the WWE, excuse me, the WWE just wiped them out like Hogan. So yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously there have been rumors for years and years about this whole thing going down. Nothing was ever proven, but up until now. Um, it's funny. It's funny when you got, like, my friends who don't even watch wrestling coming up to me saying they thought about me once they heard Jimmy uh, Superfly Snooker did it. <laughs> I, and it's just like... I, I, I don't know how to feel because it's... it's it was WWE... No, because he heard the rumors that Vince McMahon covered up for Jimmy Snuka by pretending that, you know, he didn't speak English, so Vince McMahon, you know, talked to the cop and kind of, like, covered for Jimmy Snuka. That, you know, that's a, it's a pretty big thing to be doing. And, I don't know, it's, just a, it's, it's a terrible scenario. It's... What's next? Do you yeah. think the WWE? Do you, do you think the WWE they uh, punish uh, Tamina or no? No, I, I, yeah. you can't. You can't. Pu- you can't punish a, a, a relative of someone that did something because Tamina had no involvement in it. You know, you, you, you can't. You can't scapegoat it onto somebody else. You can't say, "Oh, well, your father did this, so we're going to punish you." You can't do that because that's the wrong way of looking at things. She had nothing to do with it, you know. I don't know when Tamina was born, um, but she was probably a little kid. She probably, you know, didn't know of it her whole life, and this comes out, and it's 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 probably you know the toughest on her because you know this is her dad, and you know now he's a convicted murderer, and he's out of the Hall of Fame, and he's going to be wiped out. You know, from WWE history, so it's tough on her. So you can't kind of like scapegoat it and just uh, and put anything on her and put any punishment on her because that's not fair. Right. Then the WWE can get sued for that shit if uh, they if they did something like that. Um. Let's move on. Uh, Rare actually, I just want to mention this. I don't know why I'm mentioning this. But uh, for all those wrestling fans that can't get vagina, um, Sonny. <laughs> Sonny is Why? charging $50. $50 for 10 minutes to chat in lingerie and topless. 100 to get 10 minutes to, to uh, chat. Why? Why are we talking about this on this fucking show? Why are we talking about goddamn fucking I'm ready, money? Especially, I'm ready especially when King of Trios is this weekend, and we should be talking about that. Go for it. That is what we should be talking about. Go for it. I don't have the card on me, though, but go for it. I got the card on me. King of Trios, 2015. Obviously, Chikara's biggest tournament of the year, one of the biggest tournaments in wrestling, along with Bola, only a week removed from Bola. So, um, for those who don't know, King of Trios, teams of three in a, in a tournament style, leading uh, 
whoever wins it, if you're not champion already, uh, you get you get a shot at the title. So, a lot, lot going on here. The teams for this, we got the Arcane Horde, which is Kodama, Alberion, and Oleg the Usurper. We got uh, Team Battleborn, which is uh, Kevin Condron, uh, Lucas Calhoun, and Missile Assault uh, Man. We got the Battle Hive, which is Amasis, Fire Ant, Worker Ant. We got the BDK, which is uh, actually Cesaro's old group he was involved in, uh, and Sarah Del Rey. Uh, we got Jacob Hammer, Mer- uh, Jacob Hammer, Mermeyer, uh, Soldier Ant, and Knockin. Uh, Bullet Club, AJ Styles, and the Young Bucks, they're going to be it. Obviously, Do you think they're I, I mean, they, they got to be heavy favorites. If they don't win, they're definitely getting to the finals. You know, it just... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Because, like, if I had to choose my prediction in the finals, I would predict Bullet Club against the Lucha guys. Yeah, you know, Devastation Corporation might get back in the finals since they won last year. Um, but there's definitely definitely a lot of teams that could uh, that can make a run for it. Uh, we got Team Crown and Court, which is Los Ice Creams, consisting of El Hio Del Ice Cream, Ice Cream Jr., and uh, Kimberly. We got Dasher's Dugout, which is Dasher Hatfield, uh, Icarus, and Marka and. Uh, Angelo Setti. We got the Devastation Corporation, which is uh, the winner from last year. So defending chance. Uh, we got Blaster McMassive, Flex Rumble Crunch, and Max Smashmaster. Uh, Gentlemen's Club. We got Chuck Taylor, Drew Gulak, and the Swamp Monster. The Nightmare Warriors, which is Frightmare, Hollow Wicked, Silver Ant. The Snake Pit, which is Eddie Kingston, Ophidian, and Shinron. Team AAA, Aerostar, Drago, Phoenix. We got Team Attack coming from the UK. We got Mark Andrews, who was at BOLA, uh, Morgan Webster, and uh, Pete Thune. And uh, if you'd like to see uh, Mr. Mark Andrews talk more about this, you can check out Weekly Wrestling Podcast's YouTube because Mr. Matt Grant did an interview with Mark Andrews. So youtube.com backslash Weekly Wrestling Podcast. Check that out. Little cheap plug. Um, Team BWO, of course, Big Stevie Cool, the Blue Guy, and Hollywood Nova. Um, BWO making the return, so it's going to be interesting. We got Team Fight Club Pro uh, coming from the UK as well. We got Daniel uh, Daniel Maloney, Maloney, Trent Seven, and Tyler Bate. And last team is the United Nations consisting of Juan Francisco de Coronado, uh, the proletariat boar of Moldova, and Mr. Azer... Yeah, this is a tough one to pronounce. Mr. Azerbaijan, which uh, is known to be a gentleman from Kentucky under that mask. So, uh, yeah, so the first round is set. United Nations going against Team Attack. BDK against Fight Club Pro, Crown and Court going against the Arcane Horde, Devastation Corporation against the BWO, Battleborn against Dasher's Dugout, Battle Hive and Bullet Club, Nightmare Warriors, Snake Pit, Gentlemen's Club, and Team AAA going at it. Um, X Pac is also going to be going, uh, he's going to be in there, he's going to be doing some matches, uh, making his return to Chikara. He has a great a uh, little run in Chicago back to King of Trios 2010. Um, so definitely keep a look out for that. Of course, um, Matt Cross is going to be appearing there. They're doing their, of course, their annual uh, kind of high-flying little mini tournament that they do every year. So, uh, yeah, check it out this weekend. Um, three days King of Trios is always a, a bunch of I fun. Got, you get good wrestling. Go ahead. I, I got another tournament I want to talk about, too. PWX. They're also having something. Uh, it's basically their version of Bola. I talked to Patrick Price, uh, one of the uh, 
guys that's working down there. Uh, PWX is one of the promoters. Uh, first round, you got Tommaso Ciampa going against Caleb Conley. This is all happening September 5th through and uh, the 6th. So Tommaso Ciampa, Caleb Conley, first round. Uh, you got Andrew Ever going against Shane Strickland, first round. Ethan Case versus uh, Man Scout Jake Manning. You got Trevor Lee going against Tim Dots. Ricochet going against Moose. David Starr against Chip Day. Gunner versus Zane Riley. And Tessa Blanchard going against the winner of the pure uh entrant uh match. I'm not sure uh like who that means. Uh, it's a possibility her and Ricochet might face each other. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um that's what's going on in the first round. That's what I got right now. If if, if you look at their bracket, their brackets up right now. Um, check out uh, PWX Wrestling at PWX Wrestling. Uh, give them a follow. Uh, so it's not just one tournament going on. You got about two going on. That's the same weekend, right? Yeah, this weekend. So uh, PWX going down, I believe, North Carolina, right? Yeah. And I swear, uh, you know, it it would have been perfect if we got somebody uh, on here to represent PWX uh, this weekend to promote it. But uh, look like we were kind of late on that. Uh, but uh, yeah, and there's yeah. there's so much there's so much going on, and you know, a lot of these guys are are really busy. But, uh, you know, we're here promoting it. Chikara, PWX, two big shows, two big tournaments going down this weekend. If you're in North Carolina, you should go check out PWX. If you're in Pennsylvania, uh, go check out Chikara. Like I said, uh, three big days at King of Trios. Um, I look forward to getting that when it comes out to see uh, to see how it is. It's probably going to be available with DVD or digital download. And Chikara is pretty good about uh, putting it up pretty quick. I was I was actually watching one of the old uh, King of Trios. I was watching King of Trios 2011. I was watching a little bit of the first night. I was going to finish finish up the rest this weekend. Um, it's great. It's and it's it, it's so fun because I I watch PWG and it's like I obviously PWG is like the the, the fucking best. But it's just it's all you know wrestling and they're all going out, but. You know, Chikara is a little sillier, and it's sometimes good to kind of watch that. But, um, yeah, so, like I said, two good shows. Make sure you guys are going out. I'm pretty sure PWX, uh, I think High Spots uh, represents PWX. So yeah. uh, that show should be out on High Spots by next week. Um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of good stuff going down. It's crazy to think that Bola was last week, and now we got two more big tournaments this weekend. Yeah, it's crazy because I was actually talking to Patrick Price about the whole tournament right after the show, and uh, yeah, man, um, it should be a, a big deal uh, for their company. Yeah, you know what? I just want to mention. I think um, part of Elite Podcast Network family is going to be at that Chikara show. Um, I think Tom from the Uncle Michael Tom show is going to be out there. He told me he was he's, he's going to head out there. Yeah, I was, you know I was, what? Hold on. I actually there. have day. I'm sorry to cut you guys off. I actually have day two. I think this is day two's uh uh card right here. Uh, let me go down. Take a look at it. Uh, you got Ricochet and Caleb Conley going at it. Uh, that's gonna be happening. Uh, the Bravado uh brothers. They'll be in action against uh, Jimmy Lou and Josh Powers. Uh, Tessa Blatcher is going to be in action. She'll go against Lexi uh, uh, excuse me people for fucking up her name. Uh, I think it's Avra. Uh, excuse me if I got it wrong. Uh Again, you got um, you got uh, Zane Riley. He'll be in action against uh, John Skyler. 
I think that, I believe John Schuyler is the uh, PW uh, X Heavyweight Champion too. So that should be an interesting match. Uh, and you got a couple more uh, dope matches uh, here on the card. Again, PWX. That's uh, on their website. Go check it out, folks. Yeah, like I said, there's uh, after the craziness of last weekend, September September is looking to be a, a really good month for uh, for indie wrestling. A lot of shows going on. Um, so we're just like I said, and New Japan's coming back after you know the big G one. So a lot of a lot of shit going on this month. We're gonna we're gonna have our hands full of this. Yes, sir. I got my boy, um, that time was kind of upset for a bit for mentioning, uh, bum shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Tom was hot. Bum, no, yo, Tom. Why? I, I fucking hate that people give Sunny fucking attention. Like, like, she's a hoe. She's a, like, Ratchet. I don't it that she's a fucking hoe. Why like, is she still have a family? I don't want to. I don't want to be talking. I don't want to be talking about Sunny when we could be talking, like I said, about these two great tournaments going on. Plugging, plugging those guys that work hard each and every weekend instead of Sunny who sucks a dick on weekends. Ah. You know uh, I, to be honest with you, dude, I clearly forgot about that was going on this weekend. That's the only reason why I brought it. I had uh, brought that up. I'm glad that you uh, have my back on that one. Uh, I cut you off from talking more about Damn Sunny. Yeah. Um, well, you know I what? This whole damn show, we never mentioned this. We haven't mentioned the the, the Madison Square Garden uh, card. They already announced the card already for that the network special at Madison Square Garden. You know what? It's funny that you was mentioning the card because the card is just like another fucking house show to me. It's like, why even talk about it? The only thing is Brock Lesnar's there. That's the only thing I, I feel about it. Yeah, yeah I know. We, 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 we can talk about it when we get close closer to the event, which is not for what another month. That's the only reason why I said, you know, it feels like a house show to me. I, is it really targetable? But uh, only one thing is interesting that they, they originally had Seth Rollins against John Cena for the WWE title in this event, but they switched it to the U.S. Championship. So that's the only thing that's very interesting. Okay, hmm. why? You, you know, I just figured out something new by looking at PWX's Twitter. There's a thing called PWX Pure also. So I guess there's two of the same promotion but two different names. That's pretty, uh, it's kind of like um, how like Alpha One is. You know how they had theirs? They're like up and coming folks and like what promotion? Yeah, there's a bunch that does. I think uh, FCW in Vegas does that too, with up and comers and and big names in different yeah. shows. You know, yeah. AAW a- a- does that too. They do their, uh, you know, their up and coming, like guys and beyond. Movies. Beyond does too. Speaking of beyond, yeah. they also let me also announce some other shit before we go off air. Um, just been signed for Beyond Wrestling. Uh, you got these matches all happening. Uh, I'm not sure how they're going to do it, like how they have it lined up, but Biff Busick is going to be facing Eddie Edwards. Also, he'll be facing, facing Drew Gulak. He'll also be facing Timothy Thatcher. Eddie Edwards will be facing Drew Gulak. Edwards will also be facing Thatcher, and Gulak will also be facing Thatcher. This is all happening on the 26th. Uh, Another match has been been announced for Beyond Wrestling. You got Trevor Lee and Andrew Everett, the North Carolina boys, going against Team Tremendous. That's going to be happening at Beyond. That's all been uh, announced for uh, uh, Greatest Rivals. Uh, yeah, and uh, what else? I think Nick Gage is taking on uh, who's his face? Uh, who was it? Who is Nick Gage facing? Fuck, I can't remember. I'm I'm actually on the Twitter too, looking at the same time where you're mentioning it. Uh, but when, once we find out, we will be talking about it once we get closer, because I'm sure we'll throw our, um, 
our uh, our thoughts on uh, who we think is going to win, our, our uh, on sharing our predictions or whatnot. So uh, yeah, yeah Beyond's actually because they they usually run in Rhode Island, which is what they're doing on the twenty sixth. On the twenty seventh, they're going to be in Massachusetts, and uh, Ricochet is going to be making his uh, Beyond Wrestling debut there. So we'll probably talk about that. Yeah, talking about the power. Uh, yeah, no, uh, yeah, I was looking at that. I was like, "Is that a Beyond show too?" I, I'm glad you said something about it. Yep, and actually, it's uh, it's funny because 2CW is actually running a show the the 27th as well, and then they're also running a show the 28th. And I know Eddie Edwards is on uh, the 2CW shows. I think he's, I think the Dojo Bros. Are returning uh, the 27th in 2CW. We'll, we'll talk about it when it gets closer, and I think the Wolves are going to be on the 28th. Uh, like I said, 2CW and Beyond Wrestling, uh, two good companies. Definitely, definitely going to try my hardest to freaking get to one of them. They're so far. Like, I, I, I looked it up on Google Maps, and like, I know upstate New York. To get to upstate New York is like three and a half, four hours, and I looked at Google Maps to see how far uh, Beyond Wrestling is. It's about three hours, too. Uh, it's a long drive, but it, it'll be worth it. But like I said, once we get closer, we'll know more. And uh, a, lot, a lot of great wrestling coming up. And, you know, hey, uh, PWG, I'm still waiting for those uh, Bola trailers. Whenever you want to release them, I'm still waiting. That's going to be a minute. That's going to be a minute. I, I'm, just, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. To see. I'm looking at PWG's Twitter. I'm like, come on. Release them. I want to see them right now. But I already, I already pre-ordered because they're up for a pre-order on ProWrestlingGorilla.com and High Spots. Um, so yeah. Even though I was there, I'm gonna pre-order them too. You just want to, awesome. to watch yourself mark out in the crowd, don't you? What was that? I said you're gonna just buy the shows to see yourself marking out in the crowd. <laughs> Oh shit! Um, what was I gonna say? I was gonna say something. I forgot, but I just know. Uh, plug, no? I was just ready to shut it down. <laughs> oh, okay, I remember what I was gonna say real quick before we go off here. Um, for a good cause, people. Uh, on Twitter, change your avatars to orange, or excuse me, gold. Uh, the WWE will be uh, donating a dollar for everybody that has their avatar as GOAT uh, for the Connor's Cure. So, uh, how, everybody how do, do they, that. How do they know everybody who has their profile Well, because you, you uh, click on them and you had to sign in and then you press OK and I, I guess they know from there. Oh, so that that's how you change it. I was wondering how people are changing it. I was like... Why is everyone's Twitter picture gold? What's going on here? Yeah. Well, we got two more minutes here on the show. Um, just want to let everybody know, uh, follow us up on Twitter, at Wrestling Heads, YouTube.com backslash Wrestling Heads, Pro Wrestling Tees backslash Wrestling Heads. We are, um, uh, a lot of shirts uh, we gave away at both. Hey, Skit, you got cut off? Oh, did, uh, basically, hey, I was saying... Skit, we are, no, I'm right here. All right. All right. Basically, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be having a, a new design coming out soon. Very soon. Be on the lookout for that. Um, I'm at WH Skits on Twitter. I'm also on Periscope. We're on Periscope at Wrestling Heads. Check out our Periscopes that we did at Bola if they're still up there. Um, they're not there no more. But um, yeah. Uh, just uh, support us. Ah, oh. yeah. And uh, that's it. All right. Uh, you can follow me at Sinister Six Thirty Two on Twitter, Instagram, and Periscope. You can follow me there. Um, check out WrestlingHeads dot com for our news in in that website. And uh, go buy our t shirts. Oh. Um, anybody 
that's going to uh, UEW on Saturday, I'll be out there and uh, I'll, I'll have shirts. So um, if you want to come to me, come to me, and I'll get you a shirt. Because uh, I'm the only one giving out sh- shirts, not like Skits hasn't given anything. <laughs> but anyways. Um, I'm working on this fucking website, brother. Yeah, true. But anyways. Um, anyways, just, uh, yeah, I guess uh, just go up at UEW. I'll be there. I'm going to see how, how it is out there because lately I've been hearing great things about it. So hopefully it's something good I can maybe we could talk about here in the show. So, all right. Go ahead, Tom. Yep, and you can follow me on Twitter at to tweet me. It's my personal account. I um, believe that's the same thing for my Periscope. Follow me on there. I'll make sure to follow you back. Um, I mainly just watch people. I don't Periscope. I'm about but, uh, to say, when are you guys going to go live? <laughs> I don't go live, man. What am I? What am I gonna do? Am I gonna periscope when I work? Come on, man! I'm not gonna Walk periscope when I work. Walk around New York City one day. I don't have time. I don't. Do you know? I, all I do is work. That's my life. Is work and no fun. But once I get once I get some fun in, hopefully at the end of this month, like I said, when we we're talking about Beyond and Two CW, um, if I'm at those shows, I will be periscoping. Um, maybe maybe get. Some uh, inter- interviews lined up with some people. Get some uh, get some names thrown out there. But um, yeah, make sure you guys are following the Wrestle Lee Podcast Network at Lee Podcast Net Weekly Wrestling Podcast at Weekly W Podcast Indie Power Rankings every Tuesday and Wednesday. Eyes on the Ring every Sunday. Uncle Mike and Tom Show. Um, not sure if uh, Mr. Tom Richards is releasing a show this week. I'm sure he's still probably tired from Bola. But uh, they released a I show. I think he has. He has? If he has, yeah, we'll... I think, ch- I think well, him people... and Brian, Brian the Brian from uh, PW Pioneers did a show. Yeah, we'll check it out. They'll probably, you know, Tom will probably talk about his, uh, his experiences at Bola in California and uh, lots of other indie news talk. So Uncle Mike and Tom show, Beyond the Three Count, a bunch of, bunch of good stuff going on. A uh, lot of stuff going on through the podcast network, and we're talking about the indies. Support your local indie, wherever you are. Support smartmarkvideo.com, highspots.com, um, rhwrestling.com. I'm trying to throw out whatever I can. Progress Come on, Wrestling. Um, Progress Wrestling, they have an on-demand service, as does... AAW. AAW, AIW. AIW. So many people Fuck got their streaming su- services. Just, just support fucking professional wrestling, period, if you love it. New Japan, World... Yeah, New this Japan is- got a lot, of, a lot of shows coming up, so New Japan World, only about eight bucks a month, and uh, they got some big shows coming up, so... For wrestling, so Definitely. And we'll be back Monday. Um, follow us on Twitter. Uh, if we have some something lined up, uh, be ready for it. Until then, we're out. Peace.